Good morning, Pathfinders. Welcome along to another session. Are you ready to dive into nature with me? Brilliant. Good morning, everyone who's watching. Whether you're joining us live, I can see lots of you in the comments here today. Beth Ann and Rose and Josh and Eleanor and Willow and Caden. Hello to all of you. And if you're watching us later on on Catch Up, a big welcome to you as well. What do you think? Shall we dive right in? Hmm. Our topic this week is nesting birds and we've got all sorts of things coming up. We've got a couple of games to play. There's a story as always. We've got some brilliant nature walks from our Pathfinder Pack presenters and a scraptastic activity. Talking of which, well done last week, Pathfinders. My goodness, your super snails and wiggly worms were wonderful. We'll take a look at some of those later on, shall we? Well, as I said, let's dive right in, shall we? And start with a game. This first game, it shows lots of different pictures of birds' nests most with the birds in. We're going to start zoomed in nice and close and then zoom out so you can see whose nest it is. Your job, Pathfinders, is to try and guess which bird is nesting there. Have a go, have a guess and have fun. Here it comes. Let's play who lives in a nest like this. Which birds do you think might live here? This nest was built by a swallow. Whose nest is this? Those white feathers might give you a clue. It's a swan's nest. This bird has made a nest in an old car tire. Do you recognize this bird? It's a mallard duck. This nest is right at the edge of the water, but who built it? Have you ever seen one of these? It's a grebe. This bird's used a nesting box. Can you tell which bird it is yet? Did you get it right? A blue tit. We're back by the river and who's made a nest in the reeds? Any ideas? This is a coot. How did you get on? Did you get many of them right? There might be some birds there that you haven't seen before and some that might be more familiar to you. Right, we've dived in. We're inside the bird's nest. Let's head outside now, shall we, and join two of our brilliant Pathfinder pack presenters. We're joining Harry and George, first of all, who take us on a search for birds this week. And well done to you two. It's a brilliant nature walk, packed full of information. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's join Harry and George. Hello, I'm George. And I'm Harry. And we live in the countryside and every day we go on really long walks and on those really long walks we see a lot of birds. Yes, we often hear a lot of them too. And if you listen really closely you might be able to hear some now. On our nature walk today, we've seen many signs of spring. Such as these bluebells starting to appear. Recently, we've seen lots of primroses popping up. Now that we're moving into spring, it gets darker later in the evenings. Hedgerows all over the world are very important for nesting birds because they can nest in very wild hedges which provide them with cover and safety from danger. In the hedge behind us, there are lots of goldfinches nesting. 
More signs of spring include these daffodils. Often when we get back from our walks we hear owls in the woods around our house and this old derelict barn could be the perfect place for owls to roost. All of these fallen branches don't only provide a home for mini beasts but they are also important nesting materials for birds. There are lots of birds that visit our garden and some of them make nests. <laughs> We've just come back from our walk and fed the birds, fat balls and peanuts. We've also got some bird water over there. Some of the birds we'd visit our garden include long-tailed tits, great tits, blue tits, greater spotted woodpeckers and green woodpeckers. We also get a lot of crows, pheasants and pigeons and we just saw some ducks flying over. Mm -hmm. We also get lots of nut hatches and tree creepers and lots of other birds too. And occasionally peacocks. we did this really fun activity which was dissecting owl pellets. These owl pellets are from wild English barn owls. Here are some of the things that we found. Thank you for coming with us on our nature walks. Bye! Fantastic. A massive well done to Harry and George. I did wonder at the end there if you were going to pop out again and give us one more fact when you disappeared from behind, behind your bush. Yeah, Rose. Oh, Rose has yet to do her owl pellet activity. Oh, Rose, looks like you're going to discover lots. It did sound very windy, June. These two battled the elements to take us outside. So well done to both of you. It was fab, Gia says. So thank you to uh, Harry and George. Wonderful. I love that long list of birds that you see in your garden. And no wonder you've made it a beautiful place for them to visit, haven't you? With all those fat balls and the peanuts, loads for the birds to eat. Um, Peacocks, woodpeckers, all sorts of things. Amazing. Um, so well done. And we've got another nature walk coming up in a little bit. But before we do that, shall we have a focus together? And this week, our focus is on, of course, nesting birds. Let's have a look. Focus on nesting birds. Spring means the beginning of the nesting season. Birds are busy building their nests, flying to and from their nesting sites in search of materials. Did you know some of the UK's birds actually nest earlier than springtime, or in the case of wood pigeons, all year round? A bird's nesting season is judged to have started when most birds lay eggs. For the blackbird, that's usually from the end of February and into March. One thing's for sure, birds build their nests in many different places. Let's take a look at some. Terns scrape a tiny hollow into the ground and rely on the markings of their eggs to camouflage them. Kingfishers and sand martins dig burrows in sandy banks to lay their eggs safely out of sight. 
Warblers weave grass and plant material into cup-shaped nests in amongst the reeds or bushes. And puffins dig a shallow hole or burrow into the ground using their bill and feet. Both sexes share this task and on rocky islands they make a nest under a boulder or within a crack in the rocks. Let's take a closer look at the nests of coots. The nest is built in shallow water from leaves, twigs and other vegetation. The male and female get involved in building the nest. During the breeding season, sometimes territorial fights can occur for the best spot to build a nest. Coots will lay between six and nine eggs and both parents take responsibility for incubating the eggs and looking after the new baby chicks. The chicks are black with orange fluff around the face and body. When newly hatched, they're led to water by their father. And we may have a little while till we see any baby birds, but do look out for birds starting to gather bits for their nests. If you were a bird, which type of nest would you like to build? Oh, there's a good question for us to think about. Well, we saw a few different type of nests there, didn't we? I quite liked the little hollow that the puffins dug out into the, into the ground and using their uh, beak and their uh, claws to dig out all of that earth to make somewhere safe. Or the kingfisher that burrows a hole into the riverbank. Or would you like to have a nest inside a little nesting box somewhere really safely tucked away? Hmm, that's a good one to think about. Tiana says she would build a massive nest. Would you, Tiana? Would it have all separate bedrooms and everything? <laughs> Some birds' nests in your garden already. How exciting. Well, they are there. Sometimes it can take some close looking. And remember, I know I don't need to remind you lot, don't disturb any bird's nests. While it can be really tempting to get in close and have a look and touch and prod them, stay well away. Those birds need those nests. They're really, really precious to them. Um, so we can investigate, but make sure we don't interfere. Chloe has a nest of birds in the roof above your room. Chloe, I've got one above my room too. Can you hear them scratching about? Um, yeah, you hear the chicks wake up in the morning. How fantastic, Chloe. Hey, I wonder if you could find out what sort of birds they are. Oscar would make a massive nest in a tree, like a big tree house, Oscar. I like it. You'd get a great view from up there. And Rose would like a nest with sticks and leaves on the top. That sounds very cosy, Rose. A lovely, a lovely stick nest, very high up. Lovely. The swallows are coming back to your farm, Lily. How exciting. Are you looking out for them? It won't be long, surely. Zachariah has seen some nests already. Well done. And Gia has a bird box waiting to see if you're lucky this year. Oh, everything crossed for you, Gia, that you get some visitors. Connie's got a woodpecker nesting in her garden. Wow, this is brilliant, everyone. Fantastic. Well, shall we head back outside again? What do you think? We've been indoors for far too long. Let's go and meet Jenna, Simeon and Ezra, who are going to take us on their nature walk today. Let's see what they got up to, shall we? Welcome to Rockbeck Reservoir. <laughs> Codbeck Reservoir. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen some swans. I look on the river and it's like, Daddy, I'm here with a cousin Brown. So we see that kid this way.
Wonderful. A big thank you again to Jenna, Simeon and Ezra. What a lovely place to explore swans and ducks and a lot of little waterfalls. Thank you so much for taking us along. It looks like you were very excited to take us on your nature walk. Do you guys run everywhere? Wow. <laughs> I'm not sure I could keep up with you. Amazing. Lots of nice comments there from your Pathfinder friends. So well done, you three. Right. Is it time for another game to test our knowledge again? So we know it might be a little bit early for eggs, although some birds might be laying eggs already. But let's take a look inside those nests and find out what those eggs might look like. OK, so we've got a picture of some eggs in a nest. Have a look at the nest. It looks quite small. Hmm. But that colour of eggs, do you know which bird might have laid those eggs? Or could you have a guess? What do you think? Hmm, a tricky one. Someone thinks a robin. Straight in with that answer. Do we think they might be a robin's eggs? Which bird has laid them? Have a little guess and let's find out. Oh, someone thinks blue tits. A couple of votes for blue tits now. <gasps> Shall we see? It's a blackbird. A blackbird's eggs. Right. Oh, Guy, you were spot on. Well done. Let's take a look at some more. These eggs are a bit bigger. In fact, the nest looks a bit bigger, doesn't it? One of them has hatched already. So they're white eggs and they're a bit sort of muddy, aren't they? Which makes me think it might be near water, maybe near a river. What do you think? Rose thinks they might be a swan's egg. Someone else thinks a crow. Leo agrees with you, Rose, and thinks swan. Pigeons or swans, shall we find out, Pathfinders? Oh, we were close, weren't we? Oh, well done. Somebody said it. A duck. A mallard duck's eggs. Although that is a male mallard duck, isn't it? <laughs> I don't think he'd be laying, doing the laying of the eggs. But there we go. Let's go on. Right. Oh, my goodness. There's a lot of eggs in this nest. How many do you think there are? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But there's loads. They're all tucked up underneath as well. But what sort of eggs are they? They've got a beautiful speckled pattern. That is lots, isn't it? Yes. Well, let's have a look. What do we think? Leo thinks they might be quail's eggs. And so does Josh. Josh is agreeing with you. A hundred, about a hundred eggs, you think? Quail or pheasant? Quail or partridge? Or could they be a magpie? Oh, I see what you mean, because the black and white. Could that be a, a clue? Some people thinking blue tit. Hmm, must be a common bird, because there are a lot. I like that logic. Let's have a look, shall we, and see. I'm not sure if there's a Dalmatian bird. They do look like Dalmatian eggs, don't they? It was a quail. Well done. Great job, guys. Fantastic. Right. Let's have a look at this one. Right. What do you think? Where are they laid? Hmm. Interesting. Well, it looks kind of like in the sand. They've got bits of shell to make some sort of nest. Oh, some great guesses coming in. We've got, what are we guessing? Puffin, quail, some good guesses, everybody. Well done. What do you think they are? Let's find out, shall we? They are, and I can't remember the name of this bird now. 
I forgot to put it up on the screen. Oh, Kirsty, I've let you down there. Right, I'll find out what bird it is. <laughs> I'll let you know. Do any of you know, Pathfinders, what bird is that? The name has fallen out of my head. Is it a turn? Is it a turn? I'll double check it. <laughs> Apologies, Pathfinders. Well, uh, let's go on and see these ones. What do we think? Well, this looks like a very, very cosy place to have a nest, doesn't it? Would you like to have that nest? Some of you said you fancied a nest right up in a tree. I think I'd quite like that one too. Let's have a look. Oh, oyster catcher. That was the last one. You were right. Somebody said oyster catcher. <laughs> you got it. Thank you for helping to ID that bird. Right, so this one, what do we think? Those nice speckled eggs. Maybe a garden bird? It's a wren. There are, there's less and less of these around. Have any of you seen one in your garden? Those of you that joined in with the big garden bird watch, did you spot any wrens? Let's have a look at the next one. And these are my favourite, I think. Look at the colour. I really would, I think I'd quite like to paint a wall that colour. Beautiful, aren't they? There's only three in this nest. And again, a small nest. Does that give us a clue? Would it be a small bird? We've got a lot of votes coming in for the same bird. Lots of you think it's a robin. Josh and Rose. Oscar thinks it might be a blue tit. Shall we find out, team? Let's have a look. It was a robin. Well done. Guys, fantastic. A round of applause. I think we did quite well there, didn't we? Even if we didn't get them all spot on, we could have a good guess and have fun working it out. Right then, what is it time for now? Surely a story and a bird-themed story today, of course. The answer was on the screen. Thank you very much. <laughs> Right then, let's have a settle down, snuggle in, get cosy and comfy and enjoy our story all about magpies this week and the mysteries surrounding them. I'll hand you over to Detective Bird. My name's Detective Bird and this is a magpie mystery. Magpies have always been connected to superstitions and folklore. Right about now, we associate them with bad luck, but that hasn't always been the case. I gotta go back in time for this investigation. Back in Roman times, people thought magpies were really intelligent. They loved having them around. Hmm, what about the ancient Greeks? Well, look at this. In ancient Greece, magpies were deemed sacred to Bacchus, the god of wine. But Native Americans, well, they thought they were real special. They thought wearing a magpie feather was a sign of fearlessness. They even thought magpies could be some kind of sacred messenger. But in Christianity, well, magpies were viewed very differently. It's said that the magpie was the only bird not allowed on Noah's Ark. And by Victorian times, well, people were just terrified of magpies. They almost hunted them to extinction. Now, in European folklore, magpies are widely perceived as being attracted to sparkly, shiny objects to steal for their nests. Well, I don't know about that. But one thing's for sure, these birds are highly intelligent. They use tools, play games, work in teams, and they can mimic human speech. As for stealing gold coins and jewels, well, I guess we'll never know. What do you think? What a mystery. What do you think? Do you think magpies do steal gold sparkly things? Hmm. Let's see how closely we were listening to our story. Oh, it's a short one today, wasn't it? Let's see. Did the Romans like magpies? Did they like them? You can shout out the answers or tell the person next to you. We'll whiz through these questions. So did they like magpies? 
Yes, they did. They thought they were really intelligent and they really liked having them around. How about the Native Americans? They wore magpie feathers. What did they think it symbolised? What did it mean? Did you hear that bit? It meant that they were fearless. It was a sign of their bravery and their fearlessness. Right, what about who hunted magpies almost to the point of extinction? So they hunted them so much that that magpies almost became extinct. We wouldn't have had them today. Was it the Tudors or was it the Victorians? I can hear you shouting out, it's the Victorians. Well done if you said that. They really thought they were really unlucky birds. In European folklore, magpies were attracted to smelly things Whew, or sparkly things. What do we reckon? Yes, if you said they were attracted to sparkly things, you're right. But the big question, as always, are there any truths in this story? And why do you think magpies in particular? Did people build all these myths and folklore around? What was it about those birds? Do you think it's because they looked quite striking and unusual? Do you think it's because they did exhibit odd behaviour? We know that they're very clever birds and intelligent. Some of them can even mimic human speech and they play games and they work together as a team. So perhaps the clues are actually all there. These birds were really special. So were these stories created for people to try and make sense of these birds, why they behaved the way that they did? Lots to think about in that one, isn't there? Well done, everyone. If you got any of those right, great listening. Right then, gang, it's Kirsty's favourite moment of the week. It's time to share your scraptastic activities. You got busy last week creating lots of snail themed crafts and a few thank you for sending in your photos as well of what you discovered in nature and what you got up to. We've got lots packed into this one, into this sharing video this week. So let's take a look, shall we? Oh, let me find it. Here we go. Here are your scraptastic creations.
once upon a time there was a bunny who went to the stream and he was going to drink from it. But then there was a snail coming on the lily pod and he said, Who led you to drink from this water? <laughs> Nobody. I was the one who drank from this one for years. Besides, you're slow. How dare you call me slow? <laughs> well, we're going to start a race tomorrow and let's see who all of us will run around the pond two times. And whoever wins is going to allowed to drink from this pond. But whoever loo lose, then he'll find someone else to drink. <laughs> okay, we start at dawn. Fantastic. Amazing. What more can I say? Pathfinders, you amaze me every week. Well done. Loads of you taking on my challenge of photographing your snails somewhere really unusual or somewhere you think that they'd like to be. Brilliant stuff. A big shout out to Ivy, that J that you finally got on camera to share with us. I know you mentioned that to us weeks and weeks ago. So how lovely to see it. Thank you for sending that. The giant African snails from Aaron. I think there's a couple of you that have got those as pets, aren't there? And Daxton in Canada. No signs of springs yet. But did you see that lovely snowy gnome house that Daxton made? Well done. Lily feeding the lambs. That's a definite sign of spring. And Jaden, your yummy snail. Wow, that looked delicious. Um, a few snail races going on too. Brilliant. Some of those were really fast, weren't they? And did you spot the wormeries? Now, there was a couple of people that had made a wormery and one person that had made an edible wormery. Well, you'd have to make sure you got those the right way around, wouldn't you? Ooh. <laughs> and lovely to see somebody's live lesson journal as well, which is part of our resources that go with our Pathfinder pack. Great to see you filling that in. That was really lovely. Oh, makes me smile. So I suppose you want another Scraptastic challenge? Of course we do. Let's have a look at what our nesting birds themed challenge is this week. Let's get Scraptastic. Today I'm making a bird's nest. These are some of the materials I need. You can either use a paper plate or you could draw around something circular on a cardboard box. We'll need two circles, one which is slightly bigger than the other. I drew round two different sized plates, then cut those out and then cut the bigger one in half. Now to make that semicircle look like a nest and you can do this with colouring pencils or crayons or pens. You could even make a collage and stick bits on. Just get scraptastic however you like. The next thing to do is to stick that semicircle onto the other circle. So it looks a bit like a pouch. And then time to make your bird's nest nice and cosy. I've used some tissue paper and some lolly sticks. Now we need some birds. I used the other half, the semicircle that I cut off, to draw some birds and cut them out and add a bit of colour. Mine are a couple of blue tips. And now they can get cosy in their new home. Have fun this week, Pathfinders, making your bird's nests. I can't wait to see what you create. Oh, here's mine. And the good thing is they've got a flat back, so I can stick it up on my wall. It makes a really nice display. So that's going up there. I'm rather pleased with that, and I hope you have fun making yours. So that's what I did, but remember, Pathfinders, Use your imaginations, get scraptastic, use whatever materials you've got to hand. And I know you'll make a whole load of wonderful bird's nests. I'm already excited to see them. Coming up later this week, before I say goodbye, we have an extra live lesson. We're celebrating all things books. 
all sorts of different books. So that is on Thursday at 9.30. I'd love to see some of you there. Here's a little bit about what's in store. Do you have a favourite book? Perhaps you have lots of favourite books. Have you ever thought, how did the author get the idea for this book? What makes a book really great? How do writers create such brilliant characters? Join our special live lesson on Thursday morning at 9.30. We'll chat about our favourite books and complete some fun book challenges too. Let's celebrate our favourite books. See you there. I like that music. So I'll see some of you there, I'm sure, at 9.30 on Thursday. Come and join our book special. Um, that's it. That's the end of Pathfinders. Oh, I've loved today and I've loved learning a little bit more about nesting birds. I hope you have too. So go off out into nature, explore and learn a bit more this week about birds that build nests. And I'll see you all again really soon for another Pathfinders. Have a great week. Bye everyone. As the seasons start to change, let's stop and look around. See changes high up in the trees and deep down underground. Nature's waking up and there's excitement in the air. We'll journey on together, showing nature that we care.